Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install the IDSX SMS module. This happens to be the next version. I have a video on the the first version which did not work very well, had a lot of problems. Um, in fact, I've got several of these uh, units which never worked at all. So I'm going to now try the next version and hope for the best. All right, so in the box you're getting the uh, GSM communicator or the GSM uh, link and then there's the little antenna and then here is the serial cable to uh, connect to your main panel and there are some panel mount screws you can set this up on a panel of some sort which is much better instead of just having it hanging what I used to do is I used to Put double sided tape which is not very professional either okay so this is how you set it up now you'll notice the sim card has changed instead of it being the full size sim they are now using the uh, smaller sim card although still not the nano but uh, there we go there's the sim card slot so I'll put the sim card in and then obviously you're gonna put the uh, little antenna here here's the RF antenna And this is the serial cable. And it only goes one way. As you can see, there it goes. And this side's got to go to the panel. The red, the red cable goes to the top. And I'll show you when we're at the panel. Okay, so the procedure is to first power it up. So you want to connect the positive and the negative to the auxiliary. Now make sure that if you are using this X-Series communicator that you power it up from the panel because if you don't get the power from the panel, in my experience, it pops the uh, serial port on the... <coughs> it pops the serial uh, chip on the uh, board. Right, now you should see the... Um, <coughs> You should see the LEDs coming on. There you see them. There's one. And there you can see the other LEDs on the way. Um, but it's good practice to default this before you use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to default it. And how you do that is you... Okay, unfortunately you have to disconnect this again. Okay, you press and hold the default button, then you insert the power, the uh, lead, and then you can close it. You keep the button uh, depressed until uh, you wait a few seconds. You can see there, all the LEDs have come on. It is now defaulted. I can now release the button. Right, now to connect the uh, serial cable, the red goes to the top and it goes just over here. Now, on the older units, you'd have to put a jumper on uh, J1. There's a little jumper, although if your firmware is above, I think, 5.2 or to whatever, 2.5, then you don't need that jumper. Okay, so here is the unit, and now we're waiting for it to wake up. There we go. And this is what it should look like when it's healthy. The flashing lights are there to also signal to you if there are problems. So you can sometimes count the, the flashing uh, pulses. But because this is brand new, I don't envisage any problems. Now, after you've set it up on the, uh, the panel, you need to come and quickly do a, um, an entry here. And I think there's two entries. So it's, it's four nines. One, two, three, four. Right, to get to the installer. And now you've got to go to location 196. And you've even though it says there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you've got to still do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because you're kind of resetting the link between the uh, communicator and the panel. Right, now you've got to go to the partition that must report on this uh, XSMS communicator. So 61 is partition 1, 62 is partition 2. And so forth and there is the account code you could just put in um, you could just put in one two three four it doesn't matter right now once you've done that you've got to go to your cell phone and make some uh, send some SMSs to the panel to enroll your cell phone number as the master user
Now, what you'll need to do is you'll need to type in the user, uh, the user code for your panel. So that's kind of your arm and disarm code. And then you'll need to say add master, okay, as you can see I've already done, and then followed by your cell number. Then the panel will reply to you acknowledging that uh, it's added you as the master. So there you can see the SMS unit has uh, replied. Right, now you, once you've added the master number, there we see there's the command, add number as a master number. So there's your code. You saw me putting 1122. That is the user code, the master user code. So now uh, in this case, obviously this is the default code, 1234. So you would say your, whatever your user code is, as you saw me doing 1122, you say space, add space master space the phone number all right you saw me doing that now if you want to give someone permission to arm uh, the unit arm and disarm there you go here you'll say add phone number so it is the all you'll type in in your sms is 1234 basically your user code space add space arming and then the phone number which you want to give permission to add and then there's the reporting and then uh, set the unit to uh, retrieve the time from the cell network. That's if you want to get the time. I don't use that uh, very often. Okay, so this is the uh, little user manual. And this is still version 1. They have come out with version 2's uh, little instruction manual. But it's not available on their website at the time of making this video. Even though the product uh, is sold. So I'm still using the version uh, uh, 1. Right, then you can look at this uh, section here, which is quite important in my opinion. Uh, global means all events are sent to that phone number. Now, this can be annoying if there's a lot of things happening on your alarm. You might just want to do the partial, which is just going to give you the arm disarm, zone violations, panics, and then the power uh, issues, uh, AC fail, uh, battery low restore. Now, that's important, especially in South Africa because of the load shedding. All right, you can name your site. You might want to call it, instead of just calling it IDS Alarm, you might want to say the code. So what you'll do is you'll type in your user code, space, site, space, name, space, and then whatever you want to call it. You, you might want to call it uh, uh, work or pot, um, gym or whatever business you own, uh, restaurant or whatever the name of your business. So make sure you don't put the name of your business here so it'll be the user code space the site space name you're telling the the uh, um, x sms module that you're giving it a name and thereafter you put the data can you see the data is the the, the variable okay um then you can go through this i'm not going to go through everything here what i am going to just show you is one last thing and there's the user guide this is what you're going to give to your customer so that they can uh, interface with the unit these are the most popular commands which people uh, end users are going to be using and that will be arm arm may be just a uh, partition arm all arm partition one partition three uh, stay arm, disarm. So this little block here is imperative. You've got to let your customer know what to do there. And if they want to bypass a zone, very important. If the user's getting false alarms, maybe somebody's left a window open, uh, maybe somebody's left a door in the in the company open and it's it's uh, flapping open and close, open and close. Alarm keeps activating. Well, then you could disarm the. You'll have to do it with the d alarm disarm. You disarm the alarm. Then you will bypass the zone which keeps activating your alarm. You'll put the code, bypass, and then the zone. You can also type in the name of the zone if you have used uh, names for your zones instead of numbers. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the uh, video. One last thing which I think is very important, especially where is at the threshold. I just want to check this thing. Here is the threshold. This is very important because the default amount of SMSs which the unit will do is uh, limited so that it won't finish all your, your, um, your bundles or your money on your cell phone uh, SIM card that's loaded on there. So if you want to have more um, SMSs, for example, maybe 50 is too little, the default uh, SMSs is 20. I think 20 is too little because when there's a violation, you know what happens with the XSMS communicators? Say uh, somebody or a hardy dog or like a big bird or like a, a cat 
um, activates the alarm. Okay, so you'll just get one zone violated. Fine. But then your security company will then go to the property probably and they'll walk around and they will buy, um, activate maybe 10 more zones. So you're already at 11 or 12 zone, um, uh, SMSs. Now, if the alarm goes off two or three more times, you will have hit the threshold, especially if you want to interface with your alarm and uh, uh, set uh, some zone bypasses. So I would... Uh, increase this threshold to at least 70 sms's right uh in terms of this uh, version this is better the version 2 but version 1 if you got a version 1 i would uh, recommend maybe going to ids and saying to them please can you just refund the money because that one didn't work it was very unstable i've got units which uh worked and then two hours later just stopped working uh, IDS say, well, they'll swap it to the same one, and that didn't help me. Some of them have been swapped two and three times, and they just stop working, or they don't work correctly. Yet they SMS me constantly, giving me uh, error messages, but I cannot interface with the alarm. I think it's got to do with the GSM. I think it's got to do with the SIM card. But anyway, um, overall, uh, this product so far has been working much better than the first one. Uh, if you cannot get in uh, this version 2 my advice is don't get version 1 thanks for watching cheers